Good afternoon. Uh, this is Mel Churchma. I'm a retired uh, football coach, athletic director. Uh, I want to speak to you today on effective leadership in a uh, time of crisis. Uh, just a little bit of my background. I uh, <clears throat> spent 44 years in coaching and five years as an athletic director. Uh, nine of those years were in high school and uh, eight at Northwestern College in Iowa, where I was the offensive coordinator and uh, head track coach. 10 years at Austin College in Sherman, Texas as a head football coach, and then my last 17 years at Northwest Missouri State where I was a head football coach, and in addition to that, five more years at Northwest Missouri as athletic director. Uh, what I want to talk to you about today, like I said, is effective leadership in a time of crisis. Um, we, uh, we deal with crisis all the time as coaches, but uh, we're kind of in an unprecedented uh, time of crisis right now. Uh, I don't think that, uh, you know, I'm older than probably 99% of the people that are going to be watching this. Uh, so uh, I've never been through anything like this, so I'm sure you haven't either. And uh, what I'd like to do is uh, kind of give you a, a real life uh, example of a time of crisis, certainly nothing compared to what we're in now. Matter of fact, it's uh, got a little humor to it, but uh, uh, from that, I want to uh, give you some uh, thoughts of uh, how uh, how leadership was demonstrated and how you can use that uh, as an effective means to be a leader uh, at this time for your team in this time of crisis. Uh, back in 2011, the year after I retri retired, I was uh, selected to be the uh, coach of the USA football team uh, for a uh, world championships. Uh, they have a world championships in football every four years, the uh, International Federation of American Football. And uh, it, was, it was quite an honor. Um, we, had, uh, uh, we had to select uh, a staff and, and players, obviously. Uh, we had a staff of 10 coaches, including myself. Uh, six, six of our wives uh, went along with us. We played in, uh, in Austria. We were in Austria for two weeks. We had 45 players. Uh, ranging from Division One players to uh, NAI, and then we had uh, the director of our trip was a uh, young man that was a former player of mine, uh, and he was vice president at that time. He was vice president of USA Football. Uh, we had a ten-day uh, practice session in in Illinois, and then we flew uh, from uh, Chicago to Frankfurt. Uh, and then we were going to bus from Frankfurt to Innsbruck, where our first three games were played, and then the championship game was played in uh, Vienna, Austria. <clears throat> when we landed in, uh, in, in Frankfurt, uh, our director, uh, the young man, like I said, that was one of my former players, uh, told me, he said, hey, coach, uh, why don't you and uh, Coach Karras, Larry Karras, who was uh, from Mount Union, uh, everybody knows uh, Larry's name, uh, he was our offensive coordinator. Uh, he said, why don't you and Coach Karras and your wives go on a van? Uh, we have a van. And he said, uh, the rest of us will go to the other part of the, the terminal and uh, get loaded on the buses. I said, okay. So as we went to the van, uh, we were ready to take off. And our, our van driver did speak uh, some English. And uh, Coach Karras said, uh, said to him, why don't you take us over to where the buses are? And he said, uh, oh, that's a long ways away. But we, we convinced him to take us over there. Well, we came around this corner, and here was one bus uh, with a few people inside the bus, uh, equipment strewn all over the parking lot, and a bunch of players and coaches standing around trying to figure out what to do because uh, it seems that uh, the uh, host in Austria thought that one bus would be enough uh, for our 45 players and uh, our coaches and our coaches' wives. Uh, matter of fact, it was about 62 people. Uh, we, uh, <laughs> we immediately, Coach Karras immediately said, uh, he said, uh, hey, I'm a D3 coach. I know how to pack a bus. And so uh, he, uh, we jumped off the, jumped out of the van and uh, within 15 minutes, uh, we had the bus packed. And, you know, uh, it was amazing because Coach, uh, coach Karras was actually under the bus uh, loading things and giving directions. And, and I was doing the same thing. And, uh, our young coaches were, uh, were doing a great job of helping and all, and all the players uh, it, it, it just, we got everything done. And, uh, you know, uh, within three hours, we were, uh, we were in Innsbruck. And uh, at that point, uh, we, our, our uh, director, uh, 
convinced the uh, Austrian people that we, uh, we needed two buses. And it just happens that uh, our director was Nick Inzarello, who uh, is now uh, a, a member of the Huddle staff. And he's one of the people that uh, has got this uh, uh, set up. So uh, a good story, uh, a real life story. Uh, what can we, uh, what can we get from the crisis and from that crisis, which wasn't a, a real big crisis by any means, but uh, how can we relate that to uh, what's going on today? And, and how can you relate it to, to yourself in uh, how you're going to handle things during this crisis? Uh, I picked out some things that I think are kind of uh, key points uh, in how we made that all happen so quickly and, and why it happened so smoothly. Uh, number one is experience, uh, and that goes for every, every coach. Uh, it's in your DNA as a coach. Uh, you're used to making decisions. Uh, you make decisions in a hurry. Uh, you, you, uh, in, during a game, uh, you have a play clock. Uh, you don't have time to form an ad hoc committee and uh, do a couple of surveys and things like that. You have to make a decision. You don't always make the right decision, but you make a decision. And so I think that we all have that and we know how to make decisions uh, no matter what the situation is. Um, you know, the other thing is, is that uh, from experience, uh, Coach Karras and I both had experience packing a bus. We knew how to do it. And so, uh, and, and you know, you have experience. A lot of you have experience and most of you do on how to deal with your kids Maybe not in this situation, but uh, in a lot of different situations. And so uh, uh, put that to use. Uh, the second thing is what I would call concern instead of credentials. When we came around that corner, we stopped and, and everybody was out there and there was kind of chaos. Uh, everybody trying to figure out what they were going to do to get everything on the bus. And some of them had kind of thrown up their hands and said, well, we can't get everybody on this bus. Uh, not with all this equipment. It's just not possible. Um, when we, uh, when Coach Karras and myself got out of the van and started uh, saying, giving directions and saying, this is what we're going to do, uh, the players and the, and, and the coaches responded, not because of the number of national championships that Coach Karras or won or, or the fact that I was the head coach, but they responded because they knew we cared. And I think that is uh, more, important, more important than anything else, that you have to convey to your players every day is that you care about them. And that's not just in a crisis situation. That's at any time uh, as a coach. Your, your players have to know that uh, bottom line is you care about them as people uh, more, more importantly than you care about them and what they're doing in the weight room or uh, what they're doing in the classroom. All that's important, but you really care about them as, a, as people. You know, the old saying uh, when they talk about about players, they say they don't know, they don't care how much you know until they know how much you care when they're talking about their coach. They don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. So, uh, so that's really, uh, that's, that's really a, a big factor. Um, your team needs to hear from you now. You know, I, I think that uh, your team needs to know that you care about them right now in this situation. Not so much, uh, I mean, obviously you want to tell them what to do uh, as far as workouts and things like that. You've got ideas, everybody's got their own ideas on how you're going to handle this. But more importantly, they just need to hear from you. Uh, so, uh, you know, a lot of our kids today uh, are single parent homes. Some of them have terrible home lives, uh, you know, and uh, you, you know as well as I do that so many of you are father figures uh, for these young, young athletes. And so, they need to hear from you now, uh, and uh, they'll they know they need to know that you're really concerned about them. The third thing that uh, that I got out of this uh, kind of glean from this is a positive reinforcement. Uh, obviously, you know that in coaching, uh, you get a lot better results if you're positive than if you're negative, and, and in this situation, uh, it's the same thing. You have to stay positive. Uh, you know, if, if when Coach Karras and I came around that corner and got out of the van, if we had started uh, criticizing everybody and chewing everybody out and saying, why aren't you loaded? What's the deal? All this, uh, we probably wouldn't, it probably would have taken a lot longer to get things done. But when we got out with a positive standpoint, from a positive standpoint, said, hey, we know how to do this. We can get this done. Here's what you do. And we started doing it ourselves. 
Uh, you know, there's nothing better than leading by example. Uh, you get things done. And so I, I, I just think that you really have to, at this time, you really have to be positive when you talk to your players, uh, whether it's text, whether it's by phone, whether it's something like this where you're, uh, you're on huddle or what, whatever and you're, you're communicating with your team, you have to be positive because there's too much negative out there right now. If you watch, uh, you watch the news, uh, you know, so much about this crisis is negative and, and, and you have to, have to be get, you have to get by that. Uh, don't be distracted by what's going on around you. You know, uh, you have to focus on the needs of others. You can't, you can't worry about what other people feel. Uh, you can't worry about their depend, their opinions. Uh, you're always going to have doubters. Uh, you know, when we, uh, again, when we face this situation uh, of loading the bus, uh, we got off. We didn't worry about what other, what, what anybody there thought. We knew how to do it. And we said, this is what we're going to do. And uh, if we would have spent a lot of time thinking, well, I don't know if I dare say this because I might offend somebody or anything like that, uh, we probably wouldn't have gotten it done. So, you know, don't, don't, be, uh, uh, don't be disturbed by what's going, to, going on around you and don't be deterred by, by doubters. Uh, you just can't do that. And last of all, you have to have a, uh, a clarity of mission. You know, you have to know where you're going. And for me, uh, when I say a clarity of mission, what I'm talking about with coaches is your goals. What are your team goals? And uh, they have to continue to be your focus. You know, uh, no matter what the situation is with goals, uh, you have to be able to adapt, adjust, and overcome. Uh, the, whatever the situation is, uh, the goals continue on and you have to figure out a way. So, those are just some things that, uh, that I've gleaned out of that situation. Uh, hopefully they're helpful to you. Uh, remember this, you're a coach. Uh, you're constantly leading in a time of crisis, so let yourself lead. Just uh, think about what you're gonna do and, and be a leader. And uh, I'd like to, uh, with that, I'd like to say thanks for uh, spending this time with me, uh, listening to the few, uh, little things that I can share with you. I do have a lot of experience. Uh, that's one thing, but uh, anyway, I, I hope things go well for you. Uh, one last thing, uh, you know, and this is uh, really kind of different from, from, from what I've been talking about with leadership, but I think is really important right now. And that's a, I'd like to close with a quote from uh, John Wooden, uh, you know, uh, the great coach that he was. And he said, uh, it's not a good day until you've done something for somebody else that can't repay you. It's not a good day until you've done something for somebody else that can't repay you. Think about that. Uh, have a great day, and uh, we're going to get through this together.